Good morning, everybody, and anyone who's watching, uh, whether you're watching live or on catch up. Um, I'm Jeff Stewart, singer, singing teacher, and choral conductor, and I run They Shall Laugh and Sing. And I'm here today with my guest, Elena Pennell Briggs, who um, is um, is a um, a expert in somatics as well as being a very very fine singer. Um, so um, welcome, Eleanor. Uh, lovely to have you on. Um, Tell us a bit about yourself, how you got into singing and and uh, where your career has taken you so far. Yeah, oh no, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, well, I've always sung. I grew up in a very musical family and both my parents were singers. And in fact, my dad was a choral conductor. Uh, mm. So yeah, so I spent all of my childhood in choirs and singing and playing mm -hmm. instruments and stuff. And, um, yeah, I went to music college as an oboist. I was a, very much wanting to be an orchestral musician, but I was still singing in the background and uh, I sounded like a choir boy until I was about 26. So <laughs> <laughs> there was no there was, no one would take me seriously as a singer until <laughs> my late 20s. Um, and then, then you know, my voice started to develop a bit more and I started doing yeah. opera. What caused the change? Pardon? What caused the change? Do you know, I think I was just a late developer in that way. Mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's right. like that. you know there's there wasn't anything particular I was working with singing teachers and I'm actually I was working from the age of 18 I was singing in churches in London yeah um, as kind of a little side hustle um yeah. make some extra money while I was at college and um yeah it was only once my voice had started to develop a bit more and and blossom that actually I started doing exploring a bit more opera and that kind of thing and that's what I've been doing really since then. yeah so now I work at the Royal Opera House and I do a lot of freelance choral things with you know uh, BBC singers Academy of Ancient Music those sorts of groups and then lots of concert work lovely that all sounds great it must be so exciting being on with some of the people that, that you you will sing with at the Royal Opera Oh my God. Yes. It's honestly, it's, it's so exciting. It's also really inspiring being that mm -hmm. close to people who are like really the experts in their craft and you just see yeah. what they're doing and how they're approaching things, how they approach rehearsals. It, you know, yeah. come off stage after a performance. Like last night we were doing a performance of Eugene on Yegin and yeah. the playing Lensky is absolutely incredible. And right. you know, of us in the chorus come off stage and we're just like right need a singing lesson and need to know how he's doing it need to replicate yeah. it <laughs> yeah yeah it is it is amazing isn't it just i mean people have so many different ways of going about things but 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 when you see someone who gets it right you think oh my god yeah. but yeah. and see that close first hand you know it's really brilliant so i first came across you through mm -hmm. through the business group that we're we're in with sarah eden um and um and I, I've got to be honest, I'd never heard of somatics. So, <laughs> so, and I've had to look it up. So could you tell us what somatics is about? I can, yes. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, so the word somatic just means referring to the body, just means of the body, right? And it's from the Greek word soma, uh, which just means the body. Um, the point of somatics is that we have kind of gotten to a place in our society where we think of the mind and body as completely separate and so when people have issues um you know psychological issues or mental health issues they'll go to talk therapy and they'll talk about their problems and very often get some relief but for people who have experienced trauma there often isn't a relief that comes with talking or there's some relief but it never really kind of gets to the root cause it never really fixes the the issues yeah. With somatics, with a somatic approach to therapy, what we're really doing is looking at the biology. We're looking at what is your nervous system doing? Our nervous system is the part of us that gives us those survival responses. So people listening might have heard of fight, flight, freeze. Maybe they've heard of fawn. These are the reactions, the names that we give to the reactions that we have to things in the environment around us that have been perceived as a threat by our nervous system right and our nervous system is always looking out for anything that might be a threat to us it sees the world as life or death and its only job really is to keep us alive so yeah. it uses these reactions to counteract the threats that it sees in the environment 
um, so that we have the best possible chance at survival. So that might be running away, it might be defending ourselves, it might be playing dead, you know, all of these sorts of things that we see with fight, flight or freeze. The issue comes in when we are unable to um, fully process those survival responses because those survival responses come with a set of um, sensations in the body, physiological changes that happen. So a rush of adrenaline, uh, your digestive system shutting down, uh, the prefrontal cortex, you know, the, the part of your brain that is the most modern part that um, governs consciousness and uh, logic and being rational, all of these sorts of things, that part of the brain shuts down. We go into our very animalistic, very primal instincts. And sometimes that survival energy, that huge surge of survival energy can get, get stuck. Uh, yeah. And then we see symptoms, post-traumatic symptoms. So we see people with lots of anxiety, people with depression, people who are hypervigilant, who maybe have an exaggerated startle response to anything that, you know, is an unexpected. You know, we all know somebody who like jumps at the slightest thing. Yeah. So startled response you know it's really common um, yeah. and we live in a society that is designed to trigger our survival responses so our nervous system is constantly constantly trying to protect us against a world that is essentially designed to to be a threat really yeah. so your nervous system doesn't know the difference between being chased by a tiger and getting an email from your boss saying we need to talk <laughs> like it sees it's the same thing and you know logically we look at those two examples we think well they're completely different but your nervous system doesn't know the difference so so in theory if you get a letter that looks like it might be official and you're scared of that sort of thing that's going to do the same thing to you yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. and what happens is that people end up living their entire lives at kind of a, a steady lower level of um activation they call it their yeah. nervous system is on essentially they're in a, a form of fight flight or freeze all the time they never right. they never fully calm down from it and actually that is really tiring it's knackering for your system yeah. exhausting yeah. the body so much energy goes into keeping in that state of activation so yeah. in a somatic approach um to therapy in somatic work what we're really doing is working with your nervous system we're looking at what is your nervous system responding to and why mm -hmm. what are the particular set of uh survival responses physiologically that your body is having because although there is kind of an umbrella of them for each person it's going to be slightly different so we look at what's yeah. actually happening for you for your unique nervous system and then we work out, well, how can we release some of the survival energy that's stuck, allow what needs to be completed to be completed? So that might be a biological process, perhaps mm -hmm. an offensive gesture. Um, perhaps it's a part of fight, flight or freeze that's gotten stuck and that you know, we, it works in kind of cycles. So we want to complete that cycle. Yeah. Um, so we go in and we kind of tinker around and we have a little look. And then we help to release whatever is stuck and teach the body that actually it has more capacity than it thinks it has. Yeah. Every time we release a little bit of this stuck survival energy, we are um, creating more capacity, more tolerance for stress. So then at a day to day level, you're able to cope with more stress. Maybe the email from your boss doesn't send you into a complete overwhelm the way it used to do. Yeah. And you're able to also calm down more to relax to allow yourself to rest which very often is the other side of the coin to people who are living in a constant state of survival that they, they are they are unable to relax and the body can't get the benefit of rest in that way yeah, yeah. gosh that sounds absolutely <laughs> incredible. how did you come come to it <laughs> well i came to it as a client first right. so um i mean i'm very open about the mental health issues that i've had in the past i had some um traumatic events in my uh teens and then in my early 20s i was really struggling with what i now know was ptsd um and i really was just bouncing off the walls in terms of my behavior because i didn't know what was going on i didn't know why i was feeling the way i was feeling mm -hmm. uh, and i had all of these 
symptoms of PTSD that I didn't know were PTSD. And for those of you listening who aren't sure what PTSD is, it's post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, most people have heard of it in regards to war veterans, so soldiers coming back from the front and, you know, shell shock, that kind of thing. Um, but it's a very common thing for people to experience, even who haven't been in uh, in a war zone. Um, so I was experiencing all of these symptoms like nightmares, flashbacks, um, real anxiety around anything where I had to be in a vulnerable position. So for example, being on stage as a singer, that was one. <laughs> you know, we, we feel vulnerable every time we open our mouths and sing. Yeah. So that was a real trigger. Everything around me was triggering. My nervous system was on like hyper alert. Yeah. In the world, you know, my relationships were affected. Everything, everything really was affected. And I had a breakdown in 2017. And although it was a painful thing to go through, I can look back now and say, well, actually, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it set me on this path of trying to understand myself, trying to understand why I was the way I was and searching for something that was better because I felt like surely this isn't all life is. Surely it doesn't have to feel like this, you know. Yeah. The people talking about these wonderful experiences and loving their lives. And I was like, well, I've never felt that. Oh gosh. Yeah, I know. And it's I kind of feel, I can feel some emotion coming up even just talking about it. Yeah. But that was my reality for a very long time. And so after the breakdown, I was kind of exploring all different um different types of therapy, different um, different maybe more kind of esoteric approaches, alternative therapies, complementary therapies. And I finally landed on somatic experiencing. And from the first session, I knew. I knew even just like the first chat with with the therapist that I ended up with and I'm still with him years later yeah. um, I knew that this this was the thing that was actually going to shift something because it was working with where the where the actual problems were which was within my body within my nervous system you know yeah. trauma is um we like to think of it as a psychological thing actually no that's not right trauma is physiological you know? right Trauma isn't in the event that happened to you. Say you were in a car crash, for example, you might say, oh, well, that was the, the trauma, that was the trauma was in the event. No, actually, the trauma is not in the event. The trauma is in your body's adaptation to the event. Right. You know, and the wonderful thing about somatics is that when we are looking at this stuff, actually, it removes the need for the story. We don't need to keep talking about it you can keep talking about it because sometimes that is a, a piece that needs to be worked through but actually yeah. what we're really doing is just looking at well how did your body adapt to that yeah um and yeah it was when i started doing that work that i really started to see changes and then it was it was small shift and then suddenly it was like oh i'm making different decisions now about the people who are in my life and i'm making different decisions about work and i'm setting boundaries and I'm feeling my confidence growing because of that and you know it was like a ripple effect it kind of went yeah. out from this inner work um and, yeah it was it, it's an amazing process and now I'm in you know this really privileged position of guiding my clients through the same thing and it's, yeah. it's cool to watch fantastic and do you find you learn more as you teach it mm. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's always, it's always a learning, always a learning curve with this stuff. Um, yeah. It never ends as well. You know, you, you get to a point where you, you think, oh, there must be an end point and I, I'll be healed at this point. But we still live in the world. We still live among other people. So, you yeah. know, it's just a process of learning more about yourself. And I think yeah. it's that kind of removing all of the stuff that's in the way yeah. of what is your kind of authenticity what is your fully connected fully expanded fully in the world and loving yourself and loving life in a healthy way you know we're, we're all we're doing is removing the layers and yes. doing that yeah fantastic it's <laughs> it's as you were talking it's it's just interesting that you 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 think, well, I know someone who's going through this and this and this and this. And so many of us could could yeah. be benefiting from this sort of thing. Um, so you've you've created uh your your um 
platform the embodied singer mm -hmm. um, why why particularly does this is it just because you're a singer or do you feel that this this works particularly well for singers i think it's well it's both firstly you know when i when i first started doing the work as a client myself um i didn't go to fix my singing I went because I was in distress and I needed some help. It was it was to sort out my brain, you know, essentially, um, to sort out my mental health. And actually what I saw as I went through the process was, oh, wow, my singing is really changing. And the opportunities that were coming to me were changing and people were starting to receive my singing differently. And that was so interesting to me. And that just kind of grew and grew and grew. You know, even like five years ago, I would never, ever have said, oh, I'll be at a level where I'll be singing on stage at Covent Garden. Ever. Yeah. You know, yeah. that just wasn't in my mind as a thing. I would have, I mean, you know, in my dreams, sure. But, <laughs> you know, not as a reality, you know. And every day that I'm in there now, I'm like pinching myself. I'm like, like this happened because I did this work for myself. Yeah. Because I yeah. dedicated myself to sorting this stuff out you know um so it, it really came from that i saw the application of it with singers and in fact one of the um one of my supervisors is um a dancer and a choreographer and he uses it with dancers and sees amazing results and it, it kind of made me think in talking with him about it it made me think i i think there might be something there that could really help singers you know we are dealing with survival reactions the second we step on stage and yeah. then we have to open our mouths and think about all of the technical things that we think about when we're singing and we have to think about the music and the words and maybe it's a foreign language that we're not you know fluent in and maybe it's a difficult conductor and maybe it's really tricky music and we've got to think about being in character and all oh, this costume is really difficult to walk in and all oh, there's props there and all oh, my colleagues are doing random things today that I wasn't expecting you know we have all of these things Whenever we step on stage, you know, if you're singing in a choir, it's you're thinking about the sound that people are making around you. You're thinking about blending. You're thinking about making sure that you're exactly in time with everyone else around you, that you're following the conductor, that you are enunciating enough. You know, all of these things. Yeah. It's impossible to do yeah. those things if we are also battling our nervous system, which is saying, get off stage now. This is going to kill us. You know, because that's yeah. what yeah. it's saying. And that's yeah. where things like stage fright and blanking your words and stuff like that, you know, all of this yeah. patterns come in. Um, that's, yeah. that's really interesting because I one of the things I've often talked to my students about is is that I, I'm a big fan of boxing. And mm -hmm. in, in the world of boxing today, there's um there's this thing of building up a record of never having been beaten. And once you've been beaten that's it you can't get that back and the confidence for a lot of people really goes and i think for for many singers there can be an extremely good reason why something can go wrong on a certain day mm -hmm. but the fear that the the audience doesn't understand that um i think in many ways leads us to to carry that into our next performance our next performance our next performance so getting rid of that would be absolutely amazing yeah. Um, and do you see a lot of changes in your singers as, as you work with them? Oh, I do. Yeah. There's a level of, you know, I like I chose the, the title, the embodied singer for a reason, because it is really about bringing people back into their bodies yeah. and cultivating a new relationship with their internal states, their internal physiology. And for most people, we, you know, we live a very cerebral life. Most of us, we, we're not really in touch with our body. We know maybe when we're hungry and maybe when we need the toilet, but beyond that, we're not really kind of in touch with what our body is telling us. Yeah. Um, so for me, what I want to do with this work is bring people back into relationship with their body again so that they can get information from their body to yeah. use to live their lives. You know, your body will tell you when something is a, a, is a no. Yeah. And you can decide whether or not you're going to act on that and change the situation that you're in or whether you're going to just ignore it and, and carry on. You know, it depends on the situation, obviously. But what yeah. I love seeing in my clients and my singing clients um, is that as they go through the process, the more embodied they become, the more this kind of 
deep rooted confidence in their own ability to look after themselves, their ability to um, advocate for themselves comes through and you really see it in their singing like they suddenly are finding much more enjoyment yeah there's much more weirdly more freedom that comes with having uh more boundaries for example knowing where your limits are gives you more freedom yeah you know, when it's coming from a place of the nervous system saying okay yeah this is okay then my god then then the magic happens because that's when you can be in a flow state and you can just yeah. play and it feels like the music is just pouring out of you and you're not getting in the way of it anymore yeah you yeah know? it's fantastic fantastic so i know people can find you on instagram at the embodied singer but you you um run a program for this sort of thing with people yeah. is, that, is that individually or in groups so I don't have a group program at the moment, but that is on the cards, hopefully for next year, because I think there's some amazing healing that can happen in, in group settings. Um, mm -hmm. We definitely see that in, you know, in choirs, in choral singing, the mental health benefits of singing are well documented. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I'd love to do. But for now, I, I have a one to one program for singers, which I'm, I'm so proud of and I've had a group of beta testers have been going through it with me for the last few months and they've been helping me to refine the content make it the absolute best that it can be they've had yeah. some amazing results um and yeah we we go in depth into um a lot of psychoeducation so understanding yourself and why you are doing the things that you're doing when it comes to your singing and maybe some of the more maladaptive patterns, the unhelpful patterns that people get into uh, around singing and around performing. Um, we look at what's your nervous system doing? You know, yeah. what you're singing, How, where are these patterns arising from? What What is it that you're getting triggered by that your nervous system then is reacting to and then you go into these patterns? We look yeah. at moving the, usually when, when we have these patterns that are unhelpful, there's usually a, an element of self-attack that comes with it. So shaming, I shouldn't have done that. I know better than that. I should have done this and this and this instead. Like, why did I do this? What's wrong with me? You know, this is very common. We all do this, but we can we can help to release those self-shaming thoughts, that self-attack so that, you know, the pattern is eased. We've released some of that survival energy. We remove the attack that comes in and it just gives a space around around the singers to um, to really enjoy it much more. There's a different energy that comes with that. I think you know mm -hmm. we we've seen singers who you can kind of tell they're not enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Deep down, they might sound wonderful, but you're like yeah. they're not having a very nice time. You want to go home, don't you? You want to put your pajamas on. Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. kind of see that as an audience member, and then you can tell. You can really see it. You can feel yeah. it actually we we respond we resonate with the the states of the people in front of us we our yeah. nervous are incredibly intelligent and they um, can tell us they can resonate with the state of other people's nervous systems who are around us so when you see a singer who is really enjoying themselves and they're really in it and they're just loving it we can feel that and that's yeah. what we start to see with my clients through this program is that they they come to this understanding of themselves as a singer as a performer um, through the work that we're doing and it gives them this sense of enjoyment back of confidence back of slightly giving giving less f's you know yeah about it about what other people think and just going yeah you know this is me this is my voice this is how i want to express myself yeah yeah it's a That's, gift how would people get onto your program well, they can contact me either through Instagram. I also have a website. So there's a huge amount of information on the website about the programme. It goes into much more detail than I can go into right now. Um, yeah. about actually, what we do in the programme and what the outcomes and benefits are that you can expect. There's booking links there. There's links to book a discovery call with me, which I offer for free so people can chat through how it might work for them. Um, I also have a free resource that is um, linked on both my website and on my Instagram, which is um, kind of a nervous system toolkit for performers, not just singers, but all anyone who uses their voice um, in a professional uh, capacity. Um, and I always suggest that people try that out first, see what they yeah. think. 
Um, and yeah, just get in contact with me. I love to hear from people. So. And what is your website? It's um, theembodiedsinger.com. Lovely. I'll put that in the comments later. Um, that's, that's great. Um, this is this is fantastic. Um, it's so exciting to hear. Um, and um, we've got some comments on here. Um, uh, Yuko has said, uh, said, wow, I've never heard of it. And, and Nina um, has been using it, but never for singing um, and uh, lives next door to, to, to a, a therapist. Um, so um, which is really, really interesting, and exciting. Um, and and I know for those listening that I mean, when one of my students came to me and said said do you know anything about somatics and i said uh, only that i know this woman who's who's doing it um and and she said that's the one so i've just been having sessions and she's amazing and it was <laughs> um uh so um it, that's, but i'd like to say it to anyone who is watching this either live or in person or, or on catch up um this is obviously really important work, not just for singers, but for, for other people. Um, and the more people see this video, the more people are going to get in touch with this sort of thing, whether it be through Eleanor or, or other people. Um, mm -hmm. the, the way that most people are going to hear this is if you comment um, on, the, on the video, leave a comment, don't just like it or love it, leave a comment, even if it's only, hi, this was me, um, so that so that m the algorithm will make more and more people see it. Um, but uh, Eleanor, it's so good to have you on. Um, thank you so much for, for, for doing this and, um, and for letting us know that this stuff is going on because I think one of the weird things, the more I learn in life, the more I discover I don't know. And, oh. and more I, the more I want to learn and yeah. and and there's so you know so many people who are completely unaware that so many resources exist um and it's um it's great to have this opportunity to talk to you so thank you very much for being on and everybody get in touch with Eleanor um and it would be great thank you very much take care of yourself and we'll see you soon bye bye bye, bye. bye.